All right, welcome back. This is section 12.2 from the textbook. We're going to be covering statistics and parameters. This one's going to have some actual math equations, and we're going to learn how to build on what we had last time, which was populations and samples. Whereas here, we're going to look at how to actually measure things about those populations and samples to draw numerical conclusions with our data. So first, what is statistical inference? So that's when you take some measurements on your sample and then you make a conclusion about your population. So inference is to take one thing and kind of extend it into something else. And statistical means using the numerical data from our sample. So a statistic is a measure about our sample. So the easier to remember this is statistic starts with S and sample starts with S. A parameter is a measure about our population. So the easy way to remember that is, of course, parameter starts with P and population starts with P. So we start with the population we take a sample from that population, we measure a statistic about that sample, and then we use inference to get a parameter about the population. Okay, so there's two different ways that we can do this. The first is called mean absolute deviation. So here we're figuring out how far away certain values are from the average. Um, so if you have a little graph and you have a whole bunch of data points, figure out what the average is, which might be like this line in the middle. That's your average. Okay, so mean absolute deviation means you're figuring out how far on average each point is from the line. The reason we take absolute value is because we don't care if it's above the line or below the line. Either way, it's not on the line, which means its value is not exactly our average. So we're trying to figure out, is the data very all close together? where all the values are close to the average, or is it widely ranging and the average is just in the middle, but the values themselves are not close to that value. So mean absolute deviation. There's an equation for it. It's right here. Copy it down, please, now. Go ahead and write this down. Maybe put a box around it. And then when we do problem solving tips and examples, I'll go through in a lot more detail how to use it and what it means. The second and much more common way to measure deviation or variability within your sample is called standard deviation. So the symbol that we use for standard deviation is this little guy here. This is a Greek letter sigma, lowercase sigma. Okay, And the equation for it is the square root of this value x average minus x1 squared plus etc etc etc. So if you have 10 data points, you're going to have 10 pieces like this. Uh, something minus something squared plus, something minus something squared plus, all the way on, however many you have, and then you divide by the number that you have. Because of course when you're taking the average, you add up however many you have, and then you divide by the number that you have. And then we throw on this squared and this square root, and that helps two things. Number one, it helps ensure that the answer um, is positive, so it doesn't matter whether you're positive or negative. Once you square it, it's going to come out positive. And the second thing it does is it makes data points that are far away from the average much more important um, and cause more deviation. Um, okay, so copy down this formula as well for standard deviation, and then we'll talk through what they mean in the upcoming slides. Very important, two formulas, we'll be using them a lot. Okay, so problem solving tips, how do we use these guys? Well, you want to go step by step anytime you're using either one. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the average. So both of them start with finding the average of the data because everything you do after that is going to be comparing each individual data point to that average value. So second thing in both cases is the same. Find the deviation from the average for each data point. That means how far away is each point from the average. I'm going to go back a slide. So this little piece right here is the deviation from the average. So it's your average value minus your actual value, basically how far apart is your data point from the average. And you notice both equations use that same piece. They use it in different ways, but they both use that same piece. Okay, so once you've got your deviation from the average, um, if you're using the MAD method, you're going to take the absolute value, basically make them all positive, and then get the average. So that's a little more straightforward. Once you've got the deviations, make them all positive, get the average. If you're doing standard deviation, there's one extra step. You have to first square them, then get the average, then take the square root. Okay, So both methods, either C and D here, or C, D, and E here, ensure that you get out a positive answer. One does it by taking absolute values. The other does it by squaring and then square rooting. In both cases, you get back something of the same units as you put in. 
Um, and in both cases, you get back an idea of how clustered your values are. If the standard deviation or MAD are very small, that means all of your data is close together near the average. If these values are very large, that means your data is very spread out. So we'll see some graphs very soon. Okay, second and third problem solving tip. Note, the first two steps are the same, obviously. So in both cases, you take the average and then you get the deviation from the average. And then the third note is something that's kind of cool and maybe new, is that I encourage you to actually use Excel or Google Spreadsheets for this homework assignment. Um, it'll make your life probably a lot easier when you're doing this. And they also have a function that can just get you the answer straight away that you can use to check your work. Okay, identify the sample and population for each situation, then describe the sample statistic, SS, and the population parameter, PP. So, a restaurant randomly selects 10 patrons on a Saturday night. The mean amount spent on beverages is calculated for the sample. So our sample is the 10 people that were selected. So 10 patrons selected is our sample. Our SS, okay, that's our sample statistic, equals the money spent by those 10 people. Okay, then our population is going to be all the people that are in this restaurant. All people. Sorry, my handwriting on this is not so great after a year off. Uh, P is all, pu all people. Ah. And then PP, which is the population parameter, is going to be the money spent by all the people, uh, the average amount spent by all the people. So basically, I'll say it again, you're taking an entire group of people, you're selecting a subset of them called your sample, you're making a measurement on that sample which is called your sample statistic, and then you're inferring an overall conclusion about your entire population called a population parameter. So you might publish a result that says the average person that came into this restaurant spent $15 on Saturday night. But that's just an inferred value based on the measurements you made on those 10 people that you selected. Because obviously it might be unrealistic to get the values for every single person who came into the restaurant. So we just assume that those 10 that we selected are a representative sample of everyone. Okay, uh, we'll skip the second one because it's very similar. Find and interpret the mean absolute deviation. So remember MAD has a couple of different steps. We need to get the average. So here's where you're going to need a calculator. Let me grab my calculator. To get the average, you should remember this from uh, previous math classes. You add these all up, and you divide by how many you have. So 10 plus 14 is 24, plus 6 is 30, plus 8 is 38, plus 4 is 42. So the average is going to be 42 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 42 divided by 7. So our average value is 6. Okay, then our deviations. So here we're seeing how far each value is from 6. So this one is 6 below. One sec. This uh, first value is 6 below. So our deviations, negative 6. 10 is 4 above, so positive 4. 14 is 8 above, so positive 8. 6 is a deviation of 0. 0, again, is a deviation of minus 6. 8 is a deviation of plus 2. And 4 is a deviation of minus 2. So we're just seeing how far these values are away from our average value. Then we take the absolute value of all of these numbers. Because we don't care if they were above or below, we just want to know how far away they were. And then we take the average. So I'm going to take the average of all of these numbers, but I'm going to take the average of the absolute value, okay? So I've got a 6 plus 4 plus 8 plus 0 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2. And I'm going to divide that by how many I have, which is again 7. So 6 and 4 is 10. 10 plus 8 is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 plus 6, 22 plus 6 is 28. So I've got here 28 divided by 7, which equals 4. So my MAD, my mean 
absolute deviation is 4. So that means most of these values are going to fall somewhere uh, uh, 6 plus 4 or 6 minus 4. So somewhere between 10 and 2. And if we look at all these values, most of them fall somewhere between 10 and 2. The real outliers, or the values that are really far away from the average, are the 14, which is way too high, and the zeros, which are way too low compared to that average. Um, if we graph this, you'd see the same thing. You'd see the average value line. Most of the values are closer to that average value, but some of them are really far out of bounds, high or low. Okay, we can keep going here um, with standard deviation for each data set. Um, for standard deviation, the steps are similar, uh, but in s the last couple of steps are different. So first we're going to get the average. So again, um, we can add these up. Uh, 9 plus 11 is 20, plus 10 is uh, 30, plus 15 is 45. So our average is going to be 45 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which equals 9. Then our deviations um, are going to be 6 to uh, 10 is 1, 9 is 0, 11 is too high by 2. 6 to 9 is going to be negative 3, and 9 to 9 is again 0. So our deviation values. Then our formula here is standard deviation is the square root of all of these deviations squared divided by how many we had. So we had 5. So this is going to be 1 squared, so the deviation squared. The next one is going to be 0 squared. The next one is going to be 2 squared. The next one is going to be 3 squared. And again, uh, we don't care if it's positive or negative because once we square it, um, it's always going to be positive. So I'm just ignoring any minus signs that I see. Oops, that's just a regular equal sign. So now I whip out my calculator. I can add this up. Um, I've got 9 plus 1 is 10 plus... Um, 4 is 14 divided by 5, so 14 divided by 5, and then I want to take the square root of that, and I get 1.67, 1.67. So my standard deviation for this data set is 1.67. Um, that's pretty cool. Now I actually want to show you guys how you can do this using Excel. It will take an extra minute, but I think it's really worth it. So let's do this number 10. Let me look what's ahead. Yep, last, last example. Number 10 we want to do using Excel. So, Okay, so we can use Excel to do this by typing in the data here first. So we type in 64, 79, 81, 53, and 63. And then we can type equals stdev dot p. So this stands for standard deviation of a population. Open parentheses, highlight this stuff here, close parentheses, hit equals, and then it gives us our standard deviation almost instantly, well pretty much instantly. Um, a second thing we can use this to find is the average. So this is our standard deviation. We can also get the average, so the mean is equals average highlight all this stuff. That's our average. Then we can do our deviation. So here we can type equals this value minus the average, which is this value, right? And then it will tell us our deviation from the average. So all that stuff that I was doing by hand to find the deviations from the average, um, you can actually do using Excel. So instead of doing the whole thing on the video here, I think it'll be better if I finish it off in class because some of you might be using um, Excel spreadsheets, some of you might be using Google spreadsheets, so it might be a little bit different. Uh, but I want to illustrate that there's a, a really powerful tool that you can use in these kind of graphic organizers online that lets you solve problems like this, um, an alternate method instead of doing it just by hand. Of course you can still always do it by hand, and the problems that come in the book might have numbers that are easy to do by hand. So that's it for now, calculating these different things on our populations and samples. Alrighty, I'll see you in class.